All right, so Donald Trump is now on the clock after a jury ordered him to pay over $83 million to E. Jean Carroll, the woman that a jury found he had sexually abused and then subsequently defamed and then kept defaming. Once that judgment has been filed, he'll have just 30 days to either fork over the cash or to post some kind of bond in order to file an appeal. Now, the appeals process can be tricky, so Trump is trying other ways to wriggle out of the judgment, including a ridiculous, we've come to expect this, Hail Mary from his lawyer, Alina Haba. She just tried to intimate some kind of conflict of interest between the judge and Carol's lawyer, Robbie Kaplan, because they briefly, like for two years, they worked at the same law firm 30 years ago, okay? After Kaplan shot down that, frankly, ludicrous claim and warned she could seek sanction sanctions, Haba immediately backed off. Of course, in the end, money matters more to Donald Trump than just about anything, and he's in a real financial pickle right now. He's not just facing the $83 million judgment for defaming E. Jean Carroll. The New York Attorney General is asking for four times that much in his civil fraud trial. The decision on that is expected basically any day now and could leave Trump out of pocket and out of business. Lisa Rubin is an MSNBC legal analyst who's been in the courtroom for many of Trump's trials. Tim Adayo Agaga Williams, a former federal prosecutor who served as a senior investigative counsel to the January 6th committee. They both join me now. It's great to have you here. Hi. Let me just start on this. The, 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 they're trying to get a new trial, Trump's they, lawyers. They've insinuated that they're going to file a motion for a new trial. That's even in the letter where they've conceded that there actually isn't a problem between the two Kaplans. They drop a footnote saying, of course, we're going to address this bias problem that the judge has with us in our post-trial motions, including potentially under Rule 59. Rule 59 is the shorthand for a motion for a new trial. And Chris, I want to point out to you and our viewers, they've tried a lot of these kind of wacky things so far. They've asked for a recusal of Judge Kaplan on the basis of his relationship with another of E. Jean Carroll's lawyers. They asked for a mistrial after E. Jean Carroll admitted to deleting death threats against her. So this is the third time they've tried for a do-over or cutting it short based on bias or alleged improprieties because they know that they don't have real substantive grounds for an appeal. Now, in terms of substantive grounds for appeal, I was looking into this and talking to some lawyers. It's not like appealing a federal jury award is not is not very easy. No, it's not. And and partly because the question before that's going to be on appeal is going to be really about the law. The, you know, the factual question as to sexual assault was handled in a separate trial. They cannot appealing this judgment then try to relitigate that point. Correct. That was the issue on the trial record here. So the factual record is pretty set. So what's going to be happening is they're going to be challenging legal conclusions here, perhaps evidentiary or something otherwise, again, very limited, or they're going to be saying that the judge erred in finding, as we presume he will, that this was a reasonable uh, civil judgment here, right. and which is what they're going to do after the Rule 59 motion. They'll try to get that verdict amended. Judge Kaplan is going to reject that, and they'll take that up to the Second Circuit. But I think important here, the Second Circuit, the appellate court, is going to look at Judge Kaplan with very favorable eyes. He's a very well-respected judge in Southern District, and that's one of the most, if not the most respected court in the country. So it's a really an uphill battle here. I mean, again, it's one of these things where every day that you can avoid paying the piper is a day you win, and that's basically the way they've been operating <laughs> throughout this entire thing. We should also know, Lisa, like, part of this is he spent 50 million, this is what we got, his super PAC spent 50 million on legal expenses in 2023. Uh, uh, on legal bills, investigation-related expenses last year, according to two people briefed on the figure. But again, spent $50 million. You just raised it all. That's right, and we're going to find it's out like tomorrow. It's like if you go out to dinner, it's like, well, that's an extravagant dinner. Someone else pays for it. It's like, yeah, you know what? File that other motion. What, <laughs> what do you do? What's it going to you know, cost? Chris, tomorrow is the FEC's deadline for PACs to make their filing for the second half of 2023. So while the New York Times has reported that overall, through two PACs, he paid $50 million in legal fees, tomorrow we get that nitty-gritty, right? We find out who he paid and what increments. And most of the law firms that represent him are not big law firms that could have handled multiple matters. They're places like Haba Medeo, which represented him in the Carroll case, or Continental PLLC, that's Chris Keiss's firm. Chris Keiss represents him, obviously, in this New York Attorney General's case. So it'll be pretty easy for people like us to connect those dots and figure out just exactly what those small dollar donors have been paying for. And of course, everybody who donates to Trump campaign, 10% of that goes to Save America too. Right. That, I forgot they were doing that. That's amazing. It's a little 10 percent just like off the top shuttle payment. So then we've got we, we are also obviously we're awaiting the immunity decision by the D.C. Circuit. I'm just, you know, watch pot never boils. I'm just putting it's over here. It's back. 
<laughs> on the back burner. I'm not looking at that anymore. Uh, there is Judge Ungoran is going to enter some sort of finding, right, in the New York civil trial. And he's basically going to tell us, like, what did the did the plaintiffs meet their burden and also how much money, right? Yeah, he's going to give us uh, the number, right? Uh, Tish James' office has asked for $370 million, but we're also going to learn whether the, the defendants, namely the former president, are going to be able to continue to operate a business in uh, New York State or whether they're going to get what's been called the corporate death penalty. That's also a, a big possibility here. So we'll be looking for the number and Trump's future uh, as a businessman in this, in this state.